What's going on, everybody? My name is Nick. And I'm Sarah. And this is The Deep Dive, and we are in week two of our Chick-fil-A series. Chick -fil -A series. Lessons yeah. we've learned from Chick-fil-A, and this will be the second time you're seeing us Yay. together. Uh, Dave Benson is, should be traveling back right now as we speak, uh, back to the homestead. And uh, so I guess it'll be back to the Nick and Dave's next week, but for this week... It's going to be so sad without me. We, we've had some fun, Sarah. I'm not going to lie. We've had, we've had some fun. Um, and we got to kind of fill in, do the sermons while he was away. Yeah. You did yours this week. We took popular Chick-fil-A uh, titles, phrases, and you had It's My Pleasure. It's My Pleasure. And you talked about hospitality. Sure did. Something that I would say you're pretty good at. Well, thank you. Yeah. Are you ready to get into it? Let's do it. <laughs> So, Sarah, yes. I need to know, the people need to know, we're, we've been talking about Chick-fil-A this whole time. What is your favorite side at Chick-fil-A? The mac and cheese is, is delicious. It is. But the problem with the mac and cheese is that you really can only eat so much of it. So I'm going to go with the French fries. Mm. Not so much that I love the French fries, but that I love Chick-fil-A sauce. And it doesn't feel right to eat the sauce by itself. So the French fries act as a, a vehicle. Yes, that it would be weird have you just be spoonful of sauce if and I just could, eating it over I and over again. It's really good. <laughs> and we're done. Thank you guys for coming. No, just joking. Uh, well, Sarah, <laughs> you, you had the opportunity to preach this week. Um, and... The rumor has it that somehow you've moved up to best staff member behind Dave. I sure have. No, that's no, what no, no, that's no. what they said. No, I was told number one behind Dave. That's what I heard. Mm, we'll, like we'll, we'll clarify up, this but... week. We'll clarify this week. <laughs> but you have moved up the ranks because of your cookie um, giveaway and and the fact that you make coffee. Yes. I think those two things really kind of pushed you, pushed you up the leaderboards there. Yes. But I do want to say, I think it was unfair that you had, you were the second one. Why? So you got to upstage me easily. You knew, you knew what you were, you had to compete with. Mm -hmm. So if this happens again, I'm going second and I'm bringing pie or something like that. You, should, you, totally should. <laughs> you missed an opportunity. You could have brought pillows. You could have brought blankets. You could have given us time to nap during service. I'm bringing 200 blankets. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm offering suggestions. So next time, next time there's a two-weeker, Dave, make it happen. I'm going second. Okay. Because I got to move back up some leaderboards here <laughs> after you've... Uh, so gracefully placed yourself up there at the upper echelon, but that's not really the main reason we're here. We're actually here to really kind of dive a little deeper into the sermon. You did preach about hospitality and uh, just kind of give us a quick rundown, kind of a quick hit of what you talked about, and then we'll kind of hit some of the finer points. Yeah. So we talked about hospitality and we started by talking about like what we all assume hospitality is or what we all think or feel like hospitality is. And a majority of the room was like, Food. Yeah, that's actually, most of us think about food. Mm -hmm. But I wanted us to take like a new perspective, a new shift on what hospitality means, looking at it through the lens of hospitality being creating safe spaces. Whether that's with food, whether that's just in conversation, whether that's making a space that's comfortable, like shifting it so we understand that if you can't cook, if you can't provide a meal financially, if you don't have a house that you want to welcome people to, it doesn't mean you can't be hospitable. Mm. Hospitality is actually a really simple thing to do when it comes to just making a space that's safe for someone else. Yeah. So when you talk about hospitality, I guess, I guess as we look at it at the, as the church and this idea of creating safe spaces, what, what do you think people are looking for? Like, what, what are they needing that might need to be provided for? I, that feels like a loaded question. There's well, it could, that could be the whole so question we talk many about. things but. that people need when they walk into a church. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Especially, give examples for people out there so they can kind of let their brains roll. Yeah. Um, I, I learned this last year in working with the youth and being able to like interact 
somewhat in their school spaces and hearing kids say, I really enjoyed like talking to you. I really enjoy being with my friend. I will never come to church though, because the building isn't a safe space for me Hmm. and hearing them talk about their experiences in church and how it's been a really negative and a really harmful experience for them and asking the question of like, what would it take for you to be comfortable here? And they're like, I'm not accepted for who I am there, but why? And it's just people who maybe are different than we are, or there are spaces where the like big church as a whole has said, oh, you're actually not welcome in this space, that here we can create a safe space for you to be who you are. Yeah. Figuring that out, however you're figuring that out, but you have a safe space to do it here where you're known and you're loved for who you are and we're working it out with you yeah. to the best of our ability. And sometimes that does look like providing food. Like for the youth group, we go out twice a month and I just have dinners with the youth. And the big reason for that was for people like that who never wanted to step foot in a church, but wanted to engage with our youth group because these kids are good at making safe spaces. But if this building isn't safe, then we'll take it to Waffle House. Like, or (laughs) Chick-fil-A, but (laughs) stay on brand, Sarah. Sorry, sorry. (laughs) wrong sermon. Um, (laughs) But it's just creating a space for them to be who they are and say, Hey, Mm. whatever, like, however you're living your life, are you safe? Yeah. Are you loved? Do you have what you need? What can we do to come alongside you? And not so much, Hey, I think that you're a sinner in need of grace. And then if you're not willing to accept that you're not welcome here, it's us being able to look at them in the eye and say, I love you for where you are and who you are. Can I introduce you to Jesus? Right. Who's going to love you a lot better than I could. Who's going to come alongside you and work through what, Ever it is you're working through better than I can, but I'm going to do all I can in this space with you to yeah. be there. Yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting how you kind of said you were, you started it off by kind of saying how some of these kids feel like they can't be themselves at church or <clears throat> and I don't know if that's necessarily the youth that are here as much as it is as maybe their friends yes. and and stuff like that, but it's interesting because you know that might not even be the vibe that they would get from actually coming to our church, but society says, oh, this is what church feels or thinks, you know, there's a lot of, you know, assumptions out there about what church is. And so I think we're kind of combating those things quite often as a church, even though here at Hickory Flat, it might not be that way at all, Right. but because of where it is other places, we kind of have to wrestle through that. And and I like I like the idea of kind of meeting them where they're at, whether that's physical location of here, Waffle House or Chick Fil A, right? No, um, where wherever that might be, because I, I think those are the ways to break down relationally some of those doors yeah. just just by location. Yeah. Um, so. Why do you think hospitality? So, so you kind of came up with this hospitality, and for the church, why do you think it's so important that we all engage in it? Uh, because I think that was kind of your challenge. Yeah. Uh, you kind of really started by, or you kind of put, looked at everybody and said, "How do you bring a space of hospitality?" And you used the kind of uh, one of your friends, Jessica. You used yeah. her example how. You know, you can go to her house in her in your nice fluffy jammies or whatever, and just sit down on the couch, get a plate of cookies, and uh, which you very well illustrated. You brought the cookies. Which you brought the cookies. Again, uh, I'm a little salt. No, I'm just joking. They were great. <laughs> um, but why why do you think it's important that we all try to engage in that? Because I think, as individual humans, but also as people who are engaged and in the church, it's really the heart of the gospel to make safe spaces. Mm. Like when you look at the life of Jesus and what he did when he lived here, he was continually making safe spaces. He was going into the uncomfortable places where people are like, why are you there? Why are you with those individuals? And he made it a safe space where regardless of the person, like they were welcome to be there. Yeah. One of my favorites is the story of Zacchaeus when like everybody hated him. Like nobody wanted to hang out with him. And Jesus was like, I'm going to come to your house for dinner. Like, just come on down. Like we're going to go and hang out together. And he made a safe space for Zacchaeus to go and be who he was. And that's how he got to know who Jesus was. Because if we're not comfortable where we are, if we don't feel safe where we are, there's not a chance that we're going to get to know God. 
because all the walls are up and I'm not going to break them down because I'm not safe here. But when you create a safe space for me to talk through where I am, for me to be who I am, where I'm at at that point in my life, that gives me the opportunity to get to know God. Mm. That gives me an opportunity to kind of meet with him where I'm at and be able to say, hey, this is what I'm bringing to you and not feel like I'm being judged for bringing it. But like, this is just where I am and I need help walking through it. I need help figuring out how to get out of it. I need whatever it is that I need, but I can't bring that if I'm not in a safe place. Yeah. Um, can you kind of give, so this is something I think you do well, especially in the youth group setting. I think, uh, you've implemented a few things to help people easily connect in no matter whether they're the energetic type that want to just throw a ball and hit somebody in the face or whether they're kind of a quieter type. What are some of the things you've done in there as a way to kind of say, show people some of the examples of some of the things you're talking about? Yeah. Um, A big part of creating those safe spaces is me stepping out of what I would want to do and me being able to look at who it is that I'm serving what is it that they need mm-hmm. in that moment? And we have kids in the youth group who are very like easily sensory overloaded. So playing dodgeball isn't a fit for them. It's very overwhelming or very scary or it's too loud and they just needed a quiet place to be. And then we have kids that come in there and they have all the energy that they've saved up from the day and it needs to get out. And the fact is that we need to serve both and we can. So we split up the room on Wednesday nights. So we have tables with board games or just an empty table where they can go draw or color or just sit if they wanna just sit. And then we have a room or sometimes two blocked off rooms that has balls and we say, go throw them at each other or like go play a crazy game together. And that way you can get what it is that you need. Yeah. But a big part of that is stepping outside of myself and being able to say, what do the people around me actually need? Yeah. What can I offer to them? And that's a really big part of hospitality is that hospitality isn't about me. It's not about what I want or what I like. If I am creating a safe space for someone that I'm engaging with, it's what, what do you need in this moment? Yeah. And sometimes that requires asking the question of like, what is it that you need? Which is a practice that I have learned in the past few years to look at someone and just be like, I don't know how to make this a safe space for you. Can you tell me what you need yeah. or how I can help you? Because sometimes I don't know. And yeah. it's not on me to figure it out. It's on me to ask and give that person the control to say, right now, I just I want you to sit with me. Mm-hmm. Or right now, I need you to help me write out a text message that makes me uncomfortable. Or can you give me advice? Yeah, we can do all and any of those things but I have to step outside of myself. Otherwise I'd be like, if I was in that position right now, I would just want someone to give me Ben and Jerry's. Like that might not be what someone else needs. It's about the person that you're serving. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, and I I don't know if we've ever referenced this on the podcast. I can't remember, but I know at one point we did like a study of the area Mm -hmm. and, it was a five mile radius and, and one of the questions and I forgot exactly how many people answered, but it was quite a bit. But it was like, what do you, what are you looking for in church? And, you know, my my first thought going in would have been like, good sermon, good worship. Like there's a lot of things that I would have rated above what was number one. And number one was a warm touch. Mm. And and I and I had to kind of stop and think about it. I was like what does that look like? And I think that's what this hospitality is, is this warm touch uh, of, you know, helping people kind of get outside of themselves a little bit, but also like just having them find their space to connect. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I love, you know, I had you give the youth group example and it's really a sight to see. I, I would say you should go check it out, but we try to keep, uh, things safe and stuff like that. So we don't we just want random people walking in, but, but if you want to volunteer, if you want to volunteer or come find us and maybe we can give you a quick, like walk in, but don't just, don't just walk in the door, but it is all I'm saying. Come find me, come find Sarah and ask like, Hey, can I stop in for a second just to see? But you know, it really, it really is fascinating when you walk in because as she said, there's people over here, um, coloring and talking and there's people over here playing their favorite board game and there's people over here going bananas at doing some of the other stuff. But it's sometimes it's surprising of who's at what station, yep. you know, and it varies week to week. Cause it's like, 
sometimes the kids need to just vibe and chill and sometimes they want to be wild and crazy. So it's just one of those like fascinating things that this always is kind of an evolving thing. So, but it takes kind of a relationship and knowing, I think is, is kind of the, the big thing here is being actively involved in the community that you're trying to serve to understand what they need, you know, because sometimes I think even if you ask the question, some people won't know how to articulate what they need, yeah. but you might be able to go, oh, you're like way, like I've heard your stories, you're stressed to the max, this might be a good place. Like, yeah. let me just t- help you take a break from that a little bit, and you know? That was our, our last, this past Wednesday night. I From Sunday onward, like hearing stories of what everyone was just kind of walking through, volunteer and youth wise and taking it in we got there on Wednesday and it just felt weird like it fell off and so I looked at the kids and I said how many of us are having just like a weird week and everyone was like I am having a weird week and so we just hung out that night like it was just what was needed was that we all needed a safe space to take whatever we needed whether it was coloring whether it was hey can I pull you off to the side really quick and have like a deeper conversation just you and me like yeah let's talk real quick or whether it was, I just need to get crazy with my friends and we're going to run around in circles. It was just a night that they needed to take what they needed yeah. because it was just weird. Yeah. But it made a safe space. And this week when we come back, they're all excited to move back into teaching times and, and all of those things because we're ready for a regular week again. Right. I, I kind of have a question and this isn't one that we've I kind of talked with you through, but what if somebody, because this feels very relational. It kind of feels like you're going out of your way, maybe putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation. So I'm feeling a little bit for my introverts right now. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have any thoughts or strategies of how an introvert might implement this? Um, Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? I'm I'm not an introvert, Um, but I have a lot of really good friends who are introverts who I have learned from over the years. And what I know to be true of them that I don't know is true of, of anyone else who's in that space. My friends who are introverted deeply love like being able to go deeper and to love a little bit harder the people that they're serving or the people that they know. And those are the people that tend to be much more mindful in my experience of what I need. Whereas I'm like, we all need to have fun right now and we all need to have a good time. You know what I mean? And it always seems to go a little bit deeper, but there are times that they, there's like a a hold back or like a question of like, I'm not good enough to provide that space. So I'm not going to, or um, like, I'm not comfortable enough saying something or doing something. Find what makes you comfortable to some extent and take a little step further than that. Yeah. Knowing that nine out of 10 times, the people who are introverts have a really good just instinct about them. And they they know a little bit better than those of us that are extroverts. I don't know why that is, but it's just, it's the truth of my experience with introverts is that they have a really good instinct to say, something isn't quite right here, let me make a safe space. And you just kind of know how to do it. And it's not always involved with talking. It doesn't always require that. Sometimes it doesn't require having a conversation at all. It's just you being there and not passing judgment on somebody. It's you allowing them to be what they need to be or you allowing someone to just talk endlessly for a while. There's no engagement on your part, you're just listening. There are spaces for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, to kind of just tag on just a little bit to that is, is maybe don't think of, cause I think some people, when they hear the word hospitality, you feel like, um, like you're hosting a Christmas gathering or something like that, where you yeah. have to provide for 20, 30 people and, and make sure they're all getting the exact food that they want, getting the exact drink at the right time, making sure that nobody's going without and I, and I, I think I would just say for the introverts is that's not necessarily all that hospitality is, yeah. and it can just be for one person. You know, it might just be you have a really more of a deeper, maybe even a mentorship level relationship at some level for some. But you know, it, it's taking that intentionality with that one person, and that's what you can provide. Provide that. Don't yeah. don't feel like you have to have tables full of people that you have to keep entertained. It might just be that like. Hey, um, you know, this would, this would relate to me, especially a few years ago. It was like, Hey, you're a gamer. I'm a gamer. Let's game together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like through those things, you might talk a little bit and then 
you might like because there, there's been times that I can think of where all of a sudden something was said and it's like we should probably put down the controller and talk a little more about this. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. this is all fun. We want to keep doing that, but it's creating those spaces where people feel welcome to kind of do the gaming thing like they want to do, but then also understanding the spaces where it's like, I need to, I need to expand upon this with them or whatever. Yeah. So I just wanted to tag that yeah. in there. And then, and this is where personally I thought the sermon really kind of came, came home. The, it was kind of the left hook or whatever is you kind of talked about this dream that you had. Can you, 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 you all can go watch the, watch the stream for the whole thing, but can you just relive the, the dream part again and kind of talk about what it meant to you? Yeah. Um, so in the dream, I had walked out of like from behind the stage and walked into the sanctuary and there was just nothing set up. Like all the chairs were stacked and there was nothing going on on the stage. The lights were off, like nobody was ready for worship, but there were hundreds of people in there like ready to worship, but there was nothing set for them. And it just wasn't a safe space for worship to take place. And so in dreamland, dream Sarah, magically, I don't know where they came from, got tables and plates and cups and chairs. And I just started to set a table because that, that was all that I knew to do. Like, <laughs> that's the first thing that I think of when I'm like, oh, a welcoming space. And so I just started setting it and I, I didn't have to call anybody over. I didn't have to tell them that it was ready. Like there was a space made for them and they came. And that to me was one of the bigger takeaways is the fact that like we, we oftentimes think that all of this work has to go into being hospitable and there's just all these like details and these small things and that's not what it is at all. It's making space for people to come and for people to be in community or for people to come and worship. And I think that we get lost a lot of times in the details and in the small things of like, this needs to be bigger and better. And it's actually the really simple beauty of being together or being in a space that was made ready for you to mm. be here. Um, and there's, there's a lot that goes into what we do as a church as a whole. There's a lot that goes into like when we have a Sunday school or a community group and the details are beautiful and the big and the beautiful things are just, they're good, but we forget that really all we're called to do is make a safe space. Yeah. And if we can do that, we're doing well. But if we get lost in all of the details and we're not making safe spaces for people to worship, then we're missing the hospitality piece of that. Yeah. Because the tables didn't match. The chairs didn't match the plates, the cups, none of it went together. None of it was aesthetically pleasing, which is stressful sometimes. But it just was a space for people to come. Yeah. And that was it. And when there was space made, people showed up and they worshipped. And that's all that we have to do is just make make the space. Yeah. Make the space. Yeah. It's like a field of dreams. If you build yes. it, they'll come. <laughs> right? Um, well, that's cool. As you have kind of reflected on it past when, you, when you've had when you had the dream, has anything stuck out more to you about it? Or um, has it kind of been, like, how's it kind of rotating in your head? I, I think that that piece of, of not getting lost in the details of it has been what just continually sticks out to me. It's the fact that, like, we, we do too much. <laughs> and it's the simplicity of the gospel that's beautiful and appealing to so many. Like, the fact that it's just a matter of you like believing that Jesus is who he said that he was and following in that, like that's the simplest thing in the whole wide world. And a simple gospel means that we just need to live a simple life. Yeah. And as someone who is an Enneagram seven, I love all of the things. I love everything to be like colorful and fun. And I love to set things up perfectly. And I, I know that I've talked about this a lot with our leaders. Like when we go on retreats, I love to have everything planned and I love to have surprises and all of these things. And God just keeps teaching me like, Hey, Hey, hey we don't have to do too much. Like it's in the simple things that that's where I show up. It's the little things. And we keep, I, or I keep, I keep pouring into the details that matter to me because it makes it fun but not the details that matter where I'm making a space for somebody to come. And the simple, as you like to say, the simple but effective is better. Yeah. Like it's just easy to make a space for someone to come. It's 
easy for someone to be in a space where they get to know Jesus. Like you said, you just meet with someone over gaming. That's so easy. It's something that you're already doing. You're just bringing someone into the fold and then you're available when they need you. Yep. That's, it's so easy. Like you're not out there building these big things or purchasing all of these items to send special gifts. Like it's just easy. Yeah. Me showing up at my friend's house in my pajamas and she makes me cookies is easy. It's just supposed to be simple and we've way overcomplicated it. I way overcomplicate it regularly. Right. Because to me, when I have something prepared for you, it means that I love you and you can like see it and feel it. And the reality is like my presence and my being with you and allowing you to just be who you are is actually what makes you feel loved. That's yep. actually what is creating like a good, wholesome relationship in that moment. It's not whatever it was that I brought you. Like, yes, those things are fun and that's good. And there's nothing wrong with them, but getting lost in it is what's, what's the issue. And we just need to keep it simple. Yeah. I think there's that, uh, just to kind of pull in that is, is it's kind of been an interesting, you know, as brother-in-law, I I've kind of seen this, this in you and shift in you a little bit and, and all that stuff. And I, I want to say as somebody who has always preached to simple, but effective, like there's value in the nice trinkets as well. Yes. And, and it's about finding the places and times where, you're, you're figuring out what's important because there's those thoughtful things that you thought through that nobody else thought through that you just put on a table and it made a, a meal go from just another meal to magical. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's the, the spaces of where you can find your giftings and use, but at the simple core or at the very basic core, it's why are we doing this Yeah. to create a safe space, to build the relationship. Some of these things are nice but are they the crucial part of what's actually happening right, right. here? You know, I'm not going to argue too much because I've seen, I've seen how beautiful both sides can be, Yeah. you know, so, but I think you just find what works for you and to find what you can do. And don't, don't let the things that you can't do get in the way of what you can, hundred percent. you know, cause yeah. I think there's been times where it's like, yeah, I mean, I could probably have a few people over, but I'm not going to make it as fun as Sarah might make it. So maybe I shouldn't, you know what I mean, or or whatever. I, I think I think from both sermons that you guys uh, you guys breaking the fourth wall um, have have heard is a lot of find where you fit in these things. Absolutely, uh, because all of the practices of Jesus are for all of us at some level. That doesn't mean you're going to be the highest of any of it. You might just find the spaces where you can work within these practices. You know what I mean? You, you might not be Gandhi at some level, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be absolutely who you are right where you are. Because right. there's people you're going to interact with every day who need to understand hospitality. There's, there's ways that you're going to need to find rest in in the chaos of of the world. And I hope that that's what you guys have heard through our sermons overall is, is finding the way that you, for you to practice your faith, not necessarily to interpret scriptures or, you know, because there are some wrong ways to do those types of things, but find the spaces for you to practice what God practiced, what he taught. And I love that you gave the example and, and I'll kind of wrap up and give you a chance to kind of say, but um, is you, you brought up how Jesus kind of interacted with the disciples as, as well during your sermon and how he just kind of was like, you want to come yeah. follow? You know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't, hey, I made this giant card for you to have an acceptance or whatever. It was, hey, I've got something that I think you need to know more about. Yeah. Come, come hear about it. Let me come to dinner with you and talk to you more, which... It's good strategy, by the way. It is good strategy. He gets a meal he gets and he gets to preach. <laughs> but anyway, I, it was, that, was, that was good strategy. But, you know, I, I think we just have to do it. We just have to do these things yeah. and learn how we can do them ourselves without getting too caught up in it. Yeah. So, well, Sarah, um, 
this has been great. It's a good conversation. And I've enjoyed doing the podcast with you. And I hope that we'll have an opportunity to do it again sometime. But is there anything in closing that you would like to give the people for your parting words? You did a really good job closing there. That was a really good job. But I, I would say what I say to our kids quite often is that the world as a whole, like we need you to be who God made you to be. Because the way that you can be hospitable in some cases is not a way that I can be hospitable or it's just not really my gifting. Like I could do it, but I'm, I can't. You need to be who you were made to be and find a way to live in our world because we need what you have to bring to the table desperately. Like the, you weren't made to just not exist here. Right. You were made to fill spaces. And so, like you said, finding ways that fit for you to fill those spaces is important and of value. Yep. For sure. Yep. Body of Christ, right? We don't be a thumb. You yeah. might not. You might not want to be the pinky, <laughs> but if you are the pinky, you never know how much I you miss it until be you don't the have pinky it. Pinky toe. There you go. Get stubbed all the time. Yeah. It's not fun. But you lose your balance some without it. Yeah. They're important. They're important, but I wouldn't want to be one. That's okay. You get that choice. <laughs> Anyway, well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate you tuning in, uh, taking time to, to listen to us talk about this. And um, if you have any questions, anything you'd like to follow up on, you know where to drop the chat or where in the chat to drop it, right below the videos on Facebook, on YouTube, where you're probably taking this in. Uh, if you have anything you'd like to add to it or anything you'd like to ask us, we'd love to see those comments and, and keep the conversation going. But without any further ado, we guys, we'll catch you guys next time. Take care.